when I was thinking about what I wanted to say about Annette, and Annette and I go back a fair way, in fact, one of the early works that we acquired for the National Gallery of Victoria, which is called The Snake is Dead, which is reproduced in the book, and this is an ad for the book out there, please um, do have a thumb through it and get a sense of where Annette's coming from, because there is a long um, decade of, um, or a couple of decades of, of work um, where she's consistently looked at um, images of females and things to do with um, the female um, genre, if you like. Um, that's where I first saw her work. I, the first thing we, I would actually talk about is um, the feminine mystique. At a period when there was the feminism, which was about the politics of equality, it was about aggressively trying to make um, equal ground, equal space for men and women. And that was about something else. She was about the feminine mystique. What is it that women think m makes them look beautiful? What is it that men think that make women beautiful? And more importantly, what does our culture think that makes people beautiful? And in some ways, she's explored this over an um, entire 20 to 30 years of painting. And it's always to do with um, the female perception of themselves and what society um, imposes upon them and what they take from society. And there are countless examples, anorexia, etc., that women take on this idealised view of what they think is appropriate. And they put themselves through um, incredible makeovers to try and achieve that. And that's what Annette is very interested in. And, and it's at the base of all her work. I remember one time we were having a chat about what I call a Max Factor Factor, where she was talking about makeup and how people, you know, women put on makeup and you go through layers, and this is a way of bringing in postmodernism, a whole lot of theories, which I can bring in later. But I still want to stick with this idea of the feminine mystique. You know, you've got um, the feminine mystique drawn from uh, multiple sources. I was jotting down from pop to porn, from kitsch to culture. All these sources um, are in her work. If we look around there, we've got Angra. In her very early painting, she was looking at the um, odalisk and the, the reclining woman. And this brings me back to this painting I referred to earlier called The Snake is Dead which we acquired for the National Gallery of Victoria. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the imagery. You've got this female Bacchus, and you know the male Bacchus is fulsome and fat, and so is the female Bacchus. And it's this picnic in the middle of the bush. And there she is, reclining back in the classic, um, shall we say, nude pose, as opposed to being naked, with a reference to, uh, to Kenneth Clark. Anyway, there she is, being nude, and she has this picnic spread out there, and on the um, tablecloth are things like Dixie Belle, margarine. And then you realise that you as viewer, if you are there, there's a champagne glass. And on the champagne glass, there's a little bit of lipstick. So it actually raises that issue about women looking at women as opposed to men looking at men. And that's a very interesting issue when you think about the 70s and the 80s and what Annette has been talking about. How, once again, women look at women. Anyway, to continue the iconography of this painting, it's called The Snake is Dead. And um, up in the sky is this galah, or if you prefer cocky, this galah with a snake in its, its claw, and it's flying off. And um, it has obvious <coughs> Freudian, uh, shall we say, interpretations. And around it is this elaborately carved frame with this snake that comes in and out. And I thought this is an incredible painting to be actually placed out in the context of feminism and the 70s, 80s work. And from that, I've actually looked at Annette's work and enjoyed the journey that she's gone down. And that journey has started with the body. And I was thinking, where would I stand? And I thought, well, this is a good one to stand in front of. In a sense, that, you know, she, this woman here who's very sexy and fulsome, but she's flawed in the sense you can see down here. There is the, um, perhaps, um, uh, callus. Um, she's actually, um, her breasts are not the fulsome, big, um, shall we say, American version of it. 
She's a very natural woman, but what makes her sexy and appealing? You can look at the hair coming through here, and you can see the pubic um, hair coming through. But it's not, by contrast to the one over there, it's not that artificial image, it's more a natural image. And I thought, this is really interesting, because she focuses either on the body, and the body in the classic mode of the nude, or the face, which is almost the um, pop icon. If you look over there, the two images, um, or the one of Sophie Monk around there, or the Bronzino, which is the elaborate frame, or the Chechikov um, women there. Note the various sources, from high art to um, mass-produced kitsch. You, some of you may not know, um, but Chechikov was the most popular artist in the world. Great claim. And he mass-produced um, these uh, reproductions and paintings of the green Chinese lady, the exotic lady. And it's that exotic thing which leads me back once again to this idea of the feminine mystique. What is it that makes the woman so exotic, so alluring? I've alluded to sex, but it's not sex as such. It's not lust as such. It's the ideal and trying to attain the ideal. When I was looking at this, because um, when we had this show at my gallery in Flinders Lane, we had the two works and they were slightly separated. Now we've got the two images together and it reminds me of those Victorian stereoscopic views. Mm. Um, and if anybody's ever seen that, there you have them on the end. And it makes it three dimensional, it makes it more real. And um, I've actually often seen those sort of, um, shall we say, naughty pictures. And when we look at them now, they're so tame compared to what you'd see in the Woman's Weekly or whatever. So um, they had that sort of voyeurism, that enticement, that almost uh, allusion to reality, to, to the real thing, three-dimensional, is coming through there. Um, earlier on, um, yesterday, I was talking to Nellie about it, and we were talking about the um, collagen lips and, you know, the, the public orifice of the lips. I won't pursue that analogy too far, just to say that one is closed and one is open. And it's a sense of you compare the two. So you're involved in doing this comparison. It's like the Coles picture book, where you look for the differences. And in doing that, you're suddenly involved in it. So Annette, for me, is somebody that really involves us in the culture of now, the feminine mystique, and that sense of, of um, reversing not the male gaze, but the female gaze, but it's not um, a lustful gaze, it's one of those cultural gazes. And I just to say that I think Annette's a really interesting artist and, and I'd normally apply about three or four criteria to somebody that I think is important in the history of art. One is technical virtuosity. What she paints, she paints well, and what I like about these works is they're stylized to the point they almost come abstract. Look at them carefully and the shift of colour, the unreal colour underneath the chins and the eyes. They're actually beautiful objects in that context. They are not faulted by when she wants to be um, pictorially uh, accurate. They are. So that's the first thing. The technique is there. Um, in many other works, she's actually used photography and she's used um, computer-generated images but she's come back to the craft of painting and does it really well. And I think that's a sort of, just as photography, when we talk about the um, photographic rhetoric, that it's gotta be real because it's a photograph. The painting is, I think, um, the version of the Renaissance, the inspiration of God, because, you know, a man can't, or in this case, woman can't make art, you know, because it's something new. God must be making it. So it has that sort of immortality about it. The second thing is it's relevant to some of the theories and culture and attitudes of, um, that are happening over the last decades. And I think they're a good reflection of what was happening. But more importantly, she's setting the agenda on the occasion. And the third thing is they have a relevance that really does echo through. And if one was thinking, and it's a really interesting exercise, it's a curatorial exercise, if you have to make a list of 10 people that in the last 30 years that have made a significant contribution and they're the best at what they do, who would you put in? 
There is nobody that has consistently looked at the female, bring a fresh, new and exciting vision to it other than Annette. And on that, I'll... Um, where's Annette? There she is, up here. I shall introduce Annette and give you my congratulations and wish you well on the future journey of many beautiful paintings. Thank you. questions or answers to you and once again Robert thank you so much Pleasure. it's an absolute thrill to have you here thank you all for coming please enjoy drink up and um, come and see the show again and again because it's worth looking at it's absolutely wonderful thank you